Hello everyone and welcome to X-Plane 11 where we're going to take a tour of the Cape Canaveral area. I've got reasonable quality photo scenery of the area, level 16 for those who know about such things, though not any custom 3D objects for the launch pads or VAB. So we'll be able to see the stuff as in aerial photo maps, but not quite in all their glory. I've been flying Flight Sim since Microsoft Flight Sim 4 in the early 90s and have sort of developed my own idiosyncratic way of flying that I have fun with. It's sort of like barnstorming, but with modern planes, so those who are sticklers for air traffic control and proper approaches may want to avoid watching. X-Plane 11 is the first sim in the X-Plane line, and first flying sim in general, that I felt was properly better than Microsoft Flight Sim 10, which was released in 2006, 10 years ago, and its derivatives like Prepare 3D, Prepared, however you want to pronounce it. FSX still has the advantage on freeware and payware planes and scenery available, as well as set missions for those who might like, you know, challenges, definite challenges, and goals. x 11 has the better graphics, and also finally has a friendly user interface. Because it has a built-in scenery and aircraft editor, I expect it'll be able to catch up on the aircraft and scenery eventually, which uh, FSX has a 10-year advantage on after all. So anyway, a uh, new flight, and here is the user interface. Um, these are the planes that it comes with, and actually it comes with more. Uh, it includes some from older versions, and actually we're going to pick those. But just in case you're not familiar, we've got uh, 737, 747, and MD-82. We've got uh, Beechcraft Baron 58, a uh, Cessna Skyhawk, uh, Cirrus Vision SF-50, which is my current favorite and is uh, what I consider to be the cutest plane in the world. And uh, yeah, they do have different skins for them, so uh, that's just nifty. And uh, King Air C90. Also, X-Plane 11 is more stable than FSX. Um, just uh, want to throw that out there. A glider, a helicopter, a Phantom 2, an SR-71, which is good, and which I'm currently flying around the world in, uh, in live streams. So uh, we, we went from uh, Edwards Air Force Base to Houston to Cape Canaveral to Washington, D.C. to Boston to uh, Newfoundland and then across to London and then to Stockholm and we'll continue from there. Um, and of course you can add modded planes as well and a lot of those are free available on the X-Plane website so I have a few uh, like this Alpha Jet the B-52 came with it because the B-52 is supposed to carry uh, the X-15, but these are from older versions. The plane that we're... and so a lot of these with question marks, those are planes that I got off of the website uh, in around the freeware. So what I want to do this time though is... well, I want to carry the space shuttle. I want to have the 747, I think, um, I had a spaceship, ah, this one, yes, NASA, right, no, no, NASA, please, go back to NASA, yeah, okay, and it has an option here that says, be carried by another aircraft, we had some fun with this in the live stream, <laughs> um, no, actually, uh, let's, uh, carry another aircraft instead, and yes, the space shuttle, we will start with engines running, and we just have the default texture, which is the NASA texture, which is just fine. And uh, to give us some time to uh, move into Cape Canaveral and take a look at, if you were driving to Cape Canaveral or, you know, you're flying into Orlando, how you would uh, get into the area. And so we're going to start at Orlando International. There we are. And let's make sure that uh, the weather is clear so we can see stuff. Um, so nice high visibility. Um, hopefully I don't have to actually delete the cloud layers. But you can see uh, you can customize the cloud layers very easily. This is, um, you can slide them up and down. It's just, it's really amazing what they did with the UI here. Uh, but yeah. So, and we could delete the wind layers, we don't need to delete a few, cumulus is fine, probably, hopefully. Okay, so I think we're all set. Uh, it is daylight, very important. Oh, we don't actually need that much fuel. Um, and we certainly don't need, well, no, no, it's still balanced, okay. 
let's just give a uh, this will enable it to take off from the runway a little bit easier now technically the space shuttle is not heavy for the 747 the 747 cargo version can carry a lot more than the mass of the space shuttle it's more a matter of the space shuttle being on top of it that's a bit of a issue not that much though surprisingly enough I flew it before and it's actually not that bad so yeah interesting uh, they configured the space shuttle to make sure that it provided the adequate amount of lift and it works pretty well so we'll, we'll have it filled up to there give it some heft to it at least you'll note here it says um, try the glider tow go to fight flight configuration pick a glider hit customize button and pick a tow plane you'll be towed aloft and choose when to release the tow line I wonder what would happen if we like had an SR-71 towing it these are the things that make for interesting experience, experiments in X-Plane. Okay, so here we are inside the cockpit. But... November, zero, two, X-ray. Oh, Runway dear. Runway one, eight, right. Taxi via Alpha, three, Alpha. I might want to mute that. Runway one, eight, right. Taxi via Alpha, three, Alpha. November, zero, two, X-ray. Papa. But yeah, this wouldn't make for the best sort of sightseeing experience. So, actually... We're going to take it from outside, and I've got the data up here so that I can fly from outside. This is not this is obviously not uh, conventional flight simming, but we are sightseeing more than anything else. Uh, note the space bar to separate that that'll stay there, and that means you can do uh, glide um, tests and you know approach and landing tests with this. Anyway, let's rev up the engines. And release the brakes, maybe some flaps. I don't know why the orbiter has the its brakes open. But I've flown this before and it hasn't really had much effect on the whole situation. If somebody has any information on whether that was ever actually done while it was riding on top of the 747, that'd be nice. So yeah, it takes off very easily when it's not uh, fully loaded with fuel. Obviously, the 747 is much lighter. I'm gonna mainly use pitch trim, uh, elevator trim to control this. Now you might see some trees on some lakes and go, that's wrong, but no, it's a swamp. That's how swamps work. We will have to turn off the autogen scenery, the trees and the houses and all, as we get to Cape Canaveral, because it has a nasty habit of putting houses on the launch pad. Basically, it sees the road leading up to the launch pad as, as a road that it should put houses on, and that's, that's not right. So let's do that now. So on the fly, we can just go here, uh, graphics, uh, number of world objects, uh, minimal. And so I'll have to reload that, but that'll get rid of the trees, but at least save us from having weird objects on the launch pad. And thus, the trees are gone. Well, you can see from here the various ways you can get across to Cape Canaveral. You can see there's a causeway there, there. We're taking this highway here. And we can see a causeway there. And another one there. And then uh, we'll be flying over the visitor center. And then beyond that is where the launch pads are. So this is uh, the island with the administrative stuff. And then over there that's where the launch pads are. Now I went to Cape Canaveral a few days in a row. I've only made one visit but we went three days in a row and the third day was an Atlas V launch for OA-7 and boy was it packed. I mean the causeway was packed, there was a lot of traffic along this road uh, to the visitors complex so yeah and that was for OA-7. I can't even imagine how it would be for 
you know, like a Falcon 9 launch and landing, much less like something like the Space Shuttle or SLS or something like that. So plan ahead. So this right here is the visitor complex. Doesn't look like much from up here. Let's slow down a bit. That's the shuttle landing facility. You know the big parking lot at the visitor complex? It is actually quite... Uh, it feels bigger than it looks right here. It's very pleasant. And they have buses going from here to take tours of the rest of the stuff. We're going much faster than we ought to. Uh, th these are administrative buildings here. So there's like NASA administration. And then we proceed over and take a look around. So if we take a look at the map, this is where we are. We'll head along this coast first and then work our way up. If you hear clicking, that's me uh, working on the elevator trim. I've uh, got on the hat switch. I've got the uh, elevator trim and the aileron trim on the hat switch to my joystick. Okay, so Port Canaveral is up ahead. And that'll help me to orient myself. Okay, so uh, down south here we have launch complexes 5 and 6, which is where Mercury Redstone was launched from. And also launch complex 17, where Delta was launched from. You'll hear that a lot on the, on the mission profile series. Um, this is launch, uh, th this here is launch complex 17. This is the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. And then over here are the various launch complexes, uh, 36, 12, 13, 14, 19, 34, and 37. And these Along this coast here were where Atlas Centaur, Atlas Agena, Mercury Atlas, Gemini Titan, Apollo Saturn 1B, and another Apollo Saturn 1B. Apollo Saturn 1Bs were from Launch Complex 34 and 37. So this is Launch Complex 37 here. And then you'll see a very, very distinctive road. right here and then two launch complexes attached to that road these are launch complexes 40 and 41 and originally for Titan 3 I believe and now for uh, Falcon and Atlas launches I think I think it was 37 that uh, Blue Origin was going to use, if I recall correctly. I don't remember. I might be wrong about that. So, anyway, Launch Complex 40 and 41. And then finally, last but not least, uh, 39A and 39B, where the Saturn V launched from and where the Space Shuttle launched from. And that's where the VAB is. So, this is the crawler way. 
and you can see the crawl away tracks all the way up to the launch pads. Of course now SpaceX using 39A and 39B for as uh, being fitted for SLS, which will actually use the mobile launch platform. Sorry about the camera work. So yeah, VAB is there, but unfortunately I don't have a 3D model of it. And that leaves us with the shuttle landing strip. Right here. So, I'll try and take it in for landing. So again, if we look backwards here, we see 39B, 39A, 4140, 37, 34, and then 19, 14, 13, 12, and 36 along there. I think there's probably some I'm missing there, but that's where Atlas's and Titans were launched. And then uh, this is where Saturn 1B was launched and this is Saturn 5. And then uh, you have the runway for the Air Force Station. And then back there is where you have the Delta rockets and the Mercury Redstone rockets. As far as I know, that's how it works. We are going very high. You know how they uh, say don't try this at home? Do try this at home. Don't try it in real life. doing S turns with the 747 ahead of the landing strip in order to dump excess velocity. This is highly irregular. No, I'm not going to separate the shuttle and try and land that just yet. I'll do some practicing with that and that'll be a video all on its own. That certainly deserves its own video. Lots of stuff in X-Plane deserves its own video, frankly. Okay, engine off, brakes on. Okay, okay, baby. Don't break it, bust any tires. We can bust tires, by the way. Woo. It says uh, blown tire on the upper right hand corner when you do. I don't know how realistic the tire physics is, but that's a separate issue for a different day. Okay, brakes off, and we got to taxi. So, there we are. Our little tour of Cape Canaveral. Not the most thorough tour you could have, of course, but it's a start. Just to give you an idea of the layout of the place. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.